So hi, everybody. How are you guys? Hi. hi. <laughs> A little more energy than that would be nice. <laughs> All right. So we talked about this last week. <laughs> and uh, I think the reason that I wanted to do it was I wanted to give the client base like a, a real organic view of what the best practices are to sell real estate. So I thought the question on if you were to put your house on the market today as a realtor, what would the steps be? So I had each one of you do a list and we did not share the list. So I'm kind of curious to see what each one of you said and who has the most radical ideas. So who wants to go first? Uh, I guess if I was selling my house today, I'd be pretty excited because you can make a lot of money, which is awesome. Um, but my wife wouldn't let me do that. So it's not going to happen for me. Uh, okay, let's imagine that... So you, you want that, me to go start to finish? Like, do you, or do you, start like, to finish. like, what would you do? Start to finish. You have decided that you're going to sell your house and go. <laughs> Uh, well, okay. I would clean out the life in my house is number one. I'd start with that. I'd clean out all of, uh, the over life that's in it inside and outside. So uh, all the dead bugs, what, like what's life in your house? Yeah, I'm not <laughs> cleaning bugs and stuff. Uh, if I had bugs, my wife would be upset as well. So, uh, I would probably, what I mean is get rid of like excess clothes, excess furniture, excess like pictures on the walls, excess just uh, trinkets, all your Disney cabinets full of all the little things you collect over the years from holidays. I don't know, just get get rid of all of that stuff. I rent a storage shed to put it all in. I'd probably, if I didn't even have the nicest furniture, and some of my rooms probably don't. So I'd probably get rid of the furniture in those rooms and and put them in storage as well. Uh, what do you think the value is in getting rid of the furniture that you don't like and uh, replacing it with something else? Where's the value there? Well, the value is that you know you have a couch that's ugly and it's got stains on it, or you know that you've got a cabinet that was grandma's from 1920, which you feel sentimental over, but really looks old and ugly in your house. That doesn't like prevent you know bring value to your house in my opinion so you, you <laughs> love it but it's got to go you know it's got it's something's good that's that's not going to bring value in dollars to you when the lady comes or the man comes to buy your home so they want it to look Talk to me about why you feel there's value in making that switch in terms of how it affects the showings right you would want to do that because i want the most money for my house I want the most money for my house. So I have to make it the most presentable and the most HGTV ready looking because that's what makes the most money. We all know that. If you want to make the money, you've got to make it look like what everyone wants these days. And very rare to find someone who wants a house full of antiques. It's just not going to happen. So, so you're yeah. pretty much preparing the house for the buyer to be able to walk into it and say, this is exactly what I would want. I'm taking like, away. They can't see beyond that. Yeah, so I'm taking away my life. My life is gone out of this house. Even though I thought my life was beautiful and I thought it was perfect, and who wouldn't want to live in my life? Well, no, I, that's probably wrong. Everyone wants the reality TV life, I guess. So let's make it look like that. I guess is what I'm trying to say. Take out all of my life and make it fresh and and TV looking, I guess. So. I, I had a bit of an uh, idea when I was thinking about this and I was thinking, so let's get rid of all of my life and clean it out and all of the bits that I bit. Then I'm going to have friends over at my house. Maybe I'm going to invite like three couples, four couples to my house and I'm going to put on some dinner and drinks and I'm going to get them a little liquored up. And then I'm going to say- One, two, three. Okay, we're good. Yeah. I'm going to say, now I want you to tell me- <laughs> You know, what do you think of my house? Give me some honest criticism of my house. Is is the colors of my paint looking good? Is the cracks in my tiles cool? Or is my styling good? Maybe get some honest feedback from your friends and be like, please give me real feedback. Don't, you know, don't get upset if they do give you real stuff that you didn't think. But, you know, that sort of, that's my wife. Um, 
that sort of feedback is uh, probably going to be pretty good because they're going to pick up on the little cracks or the little blemishes or, you know, things that might need some repair in your home or some styling things that you thought were good that actually really aren't. So mm -hmm. I think that would be fun to do. And then in terms of um, getting it listed, what does that look like? What do you think are the most critical things in our whole listing opportunities of marketing, et cetera, to participate in? What are, what are the important things? You mean like bringing us in as a team to list it? Of course. And I mean, that's number one, but. Uh... No, 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 that's not what I'm saying. Like <laughs> as a listing agent, right? You yeah. know, that we have a million different options and we throw them on the table. And I feel like there's always this cloud of fluff, like everybody's pitching the what they could do and what's going to, you know, impress the seller in terms of um, any fancy marketing. As an agent, what are the things that you would 100% do and the things that it didn't matter if you did it or not? Mm -hmm. I think you, at first, before you even say that, you have to like look at your, look at the needs of the person selling. Like for instance, some people need more than just um, fancy marketing and digital marketing. And sometimes people just need an actual personal connection. Someone that's gonna hold your hand the whole way. And I think that's more important, like hearing the needs of these people and what's really important to them before you even go into that whole marketing realm and, mm -hmm. and that. but. Yeah, put that aside like for instance i mean some people just want you to come in and help them move furniture out of the, like do that clean up with them so that's pretty important and then you know and then and then of course i think the number one thing is making it look right you have to make the house look right you have to fix the crack steps you have to clean up the gardens you have to you you have to make it look like someone wants to live there and if you're not prepared to make it look like someone wants to be there then the marketing is going to suffer everything's going to trickle down from there you know right down you know. to the the way it smells like if you yeah. with certain herbs or whatever and they're offensive then try not cooking the weeks that you're showing and burn some candles right yeah or like you know dogs dogs in their cages in homes i think that's like can be terrible sometimes because they smell and they whimpering and they're like takes yeah. the attention away from people like looking at the house they're like oh there's this dog in a cage you know and whimpering so like there's lots of little things forget the dog i had a situation in glenrock yesterday where the seller came home during our showing and it completely turned the buyers off they yeah. were so freaked out that she was insisting on coming in the house with her groceries that they ended up not putting in an offer i think it was silly because it was a great house but at the end of the day like these are all the things you got to think about right yeah, on Tuesday, I was Tuesday night, I was showing a house in um, Oakland and the seller came in the door with us at the same time. Like he was like, come on in, let's go. He came out of nowhere from behind us and we're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> and uh, he decided to start making coffee and taking his shoes off, which was really smelly and like <laughs> putting them up on the coffee table and just hang out. And my buyer freaked out and was just like, this is weird. And we left and I think it could have been a good house, but we, we left before we could even really get a good chance of looking I at it. I know. It was, I'm not going to, I'll tell you afterwards what house it was, but I mean, you're not going to argue with me that it was a great house. It was really unfortunate, yeah. but yeah. it is what it is. I'm sure yeah. that they're going to get multiple offers anyway, so it doesn't matter. So yeah. Rhonda, start to finish, what would you do? You're putting your house on the market today. Did we lose Rhonda? Okay. Yeah. Well, you oh, go. No. Uh, the first thing I would Are you guys there? Is, frozen? We, we right. went to Michelle because we lost you. You were frozen. No, so it's frozen. I'm sorry. The first thing I would do is pull out. I have carpet up my stairs and in my upstairs hall and in the bedrooms, there's hardwoods underneath that have never been touched. So I'd pull out all that carpet and refinish those floors. That would be the, probably the first thing I would do. Mm -hmm. I would also change out some light fixtures and do some paint. And, you know, clean, clean up some grout, refinish some grout, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. that's probably just mostly cosmetic things like that okay um in terms of the actual listing component what would you do in terms of marketing and, and i think this is a good question for you because you just put your mom's uh one of your mom's investment properties on the market so what do you think are the important things to do well 
one thing that I'm coming into with a few different things right now is you have to have easy showings, um, make the schedule, make the schedule open and keep, keep the people out. Um, I don't know. That's about it. That's about it on you. Okay. Rhonda, what do you got, baby? Ha. So my list started exactly like Matt's. I have three kids in this house and two dogs. So the very first thing I do is depersonalize this whole house. All the family photos are put away. You know, our day-to-day -day life is also sort of put away because much like Matt said, it needs to feel sort of that the other people buyers can see themselves in my home. So I agree with Matt hundred percent. And then I would kind of do what I do every spring, right? I would have my carpets cleaned. I would have my windows cleaned. And I would keep the housekeeper, you know, I'd have her come more regularly just to keep things fresh every day, you know, on a regular basis. So the house is always presentable. Even now, my house is not for sale. And I always feel like my house is ready to show. I know that sounds crazy. Uh, <laughs> but I have this crazy thing that you just never know in life. So like, if anybody you comes in here, here you don't want to be embarrassed. <laughs> I know, yeah, like if at any time someone walks in here, I just feel like I could always, you know, it's personalized, of course, but you know, I always feel like I could have people in my home. So I would kind of do those things. Uh, I would even have, when I sold my last house in Wyckoff, I had Susan um, Farsi come by and do, it's like Matt said, like have your friends come over. I might have Susan come because she's got a really good eye for that and just sort of pick out things that I might have you know, miss, which she did for me before, which was fantastic. So uh, my most drastic thing I would do before is renovate my kitchen. <laughs> and you wouldn't renovate your kitchen before you put it on the market. Tell me why. Because my kitchen uh, is older. That being and said, I... you are renovating your kitchen. So it's maybe an unfair question, but. <laughs> yeah, well, the, you know, there's some problems with my cabinets and, uh, you know, they're older. They don't go all the way to the ceiling. They, you know, they're a little shorter then and it looks dated. And I feel like we've updated the rest of our home and now the kitchen is sort of like that last component. And I think in order to maximize us making a good return on this investment, I would invest the money into the kitchen. And I don't think it would, I think it would just be a good thing here. So that would sort of be my dramatic, you know, thing, radical move. I think I would also, because I've also noticed, you know, I've done some showings as well. And I have showed a couple houses where people have done pre-inspections too. So the sellers have had pre-inspections done. And now when, I feel like that might be a good advantage. I wanted Actually, to ask you guys what you thought too. This is a very personal statement right now. The house that you bought had a pre-inspection. And I don't, know, I don't know if you remember when Eric went through and did the inspection. There yes. was not much that came up. So they did a pre-inspection. I don't know if you yes. remember. I do remember that. I definitely remember that. And I feel like now people are also doing that. And I think with the market, the way it is, I think it puts, it's such a competitive market, right? And I feel like buyers are more apt to maybe jump a little faster if things are disclosed up front, right? So if they know X, Y, Z, or they don't know X, Y, Z, like they have it already in black and white. And I feel like that has been a good thing. So I think I would personally invest in, like you said, I would have a home inspection done and have that available for everyone to see. Okay, in terms of the marketing, what would you do? What would you demand that we would do as a team for marketing? I agree. Yeah, well, I agree with Michelle. I think with the showings, I think you have to be very flexible. You know, maybe just, a, you know, like if there's kids, dogs, I understand we're in a different time, but I think showings have to be super flexible. And uh, ooh, what else marketing wise? for us to all be available. I mean, it's competitive too. So if like one of us can't be there, the other one can be there. I like that. My, my buyers like that too. I was sick last week, for example, and Michelle came and she helped my clients and got them into a house that I couldn't get them to. And if they hadn't gotten in that Tuesday, they probably wouldn't have seen it because it went into a multiple offer situation. So I like that we have this uh, group, I guess, if you will, where we can all help each other out at different times. I feel like that's an asset to our marketing too. So in terms of open houses, right? There's the statistics are that 7% of homes that are sold, sold because of the open house. 
How do you guys feel about open houses? Would you want one in your place? I'm fine with that. I think I would at this stage of the game because they're so some of the houses at the open houses are getting so much traffic that in a week they have offers and then you don't have to show it over and over and over and over again. We'll rip the band-aid off. Matt, you? I think, if, I, think, I think if you're a seller and you want to make more money, you have the open house because because the fact that when all these buyers come, maybe for their second look, maybe they've already had a showing with their realtor on Thursday, say, or Friday, and they always come back for the sticky beat because if on the, on the open home to see how many people are there. So have the open home and make it short. Don't make it like the big three hour one, you know, the one to four, just do like a, a one to three. So like a shorter <laughs> period so that it makes it look even busier than it really should be. And then they're going to freak out a little bit and they're going to give you more money. That's what I think. Yeah. I think there's a huge advantage. I mean, honestly, like the one property that we have in Wyckoff, the showings were really, really limited. And, you know, by doing the open houses, it encouraged people to come in who maybe either their realtors talk them out of the house and they figured why not it's an open house. Um, and I think that there's a huge advantage to them. They're inconvenient. You have to disappear for a couple of hours, but I do think that they bring value. Um, so I'm going to read my list. I told you all that I want it to be last. I also feel that right now. Oh, sorry. No, go. No, I was uh, about the open houses too. I also have come into this where some people can't get into a showing. Let's say the house goes live on Wednesday and it's, they're calling best and final on Friday. Well, some people right now with work, home, school, home, I have clients that literally can't get out of the house until a Saturday, for example. So yeah. I feel like that it's also beneficial for those people that can't get out during the week. That gives them a shot to at least see the home. Well, I think an open house really on doing the best job for the seller, right? So there's always the, um, the selfish school of thought, which some realtors could participate in like, oh, open houses don't work. It's probably because they want Sunday off. Hey, I want Sunday off too. But when I signed up for this job, I knew I had to work on Sunday. But a lot of them will, you know, do the final and best before the weekend just so that they can be done with it. I don't know that that necessarily serves the seller best. I think, you know, giving everybody an opportunity to come in and allowing everybody to compete is really what brings that profit. Sorry, I'm moving. Do you guys agree? Yeah. You, Rhonda. <laughs> All right, so he had to move. I'm sorry, there's no critique me, okay? Um, and and I think I've had this conversation with a couple of you already. Like I would take a very radical approach. That being said, you know, you also need to be in a certain financial position to do it. So um, what I would do is I would um, first call the landscaper in this order, and I would start the whole process of fully you know, going through the whole yard, planting perennials, planting annuals, the whole nine yards, I'd probably spend about $2,000 roughly getting all of that front stuff done. Um, then I would do the pre-inspection, just like you said, Rhonda, because I want to identify every single thing that's wrong with the house so that I can take care of it. When the inspection happens, it, it gives the buyer the comfort that you were on top of things. And I think they have a lot of peace of mind so that they're not a little worried about it, right? And then I would move out. So my ultimate plan is to acquire the property that I'm moving into next, move into that and move out of this house that I'm in right now. Um, and I would go through the whole house and I would paint the whole entire house. I would refinish any hardwood floors that have been scratched by the dog. I mean, I would just literally go through, I'm thinking that I'd probably spend in total about 10 to $15,000 getting it ready. But I think the reward on the back end is probably a net profit of another maybe $50,000. That's my estimation. And I see Matt nodding. Do you agree? Yeah, yeah 100%. Uh, I have all that written down. I'm looking at my list. It's it's all on there. Like even like carpet, if you have carpet, I don't care if it's five years old and it still looks good, get rid of it, do it again. Carpet's cheap yeah. and it stinks if it's had some life in it. So I would, if you still have carpet in your house, I'd just replace it. Who cares? Yeah. It's not that expensive. So. And then after I did that, I would have a full team cleaning service come in and blow it out of the park. Windows wash, power wash, clean the whole inside, get it ready. Right from there, I'm calling the staging company. I'm not even messing around. 
calling a staging company. That's going to cost me between five and seven thousand dollars, roughly, you know, depending on what we're staging. Um, of course, I would use the home navigator candles all through the house because it's <laughs> awesome. Um, and then in terms of listing it, and Matt and I had this conversation a couple of weeks ago, I would not represent myself. I would have you guys represent me. I don't want to be in a place where I'm emotionally attached to it. And I don't care who you are. I don't care if you're the best realtor on the planet. You can give the best advice to a client. You can navigate that transaction. But when it comes time to you making the choices for you, I feel you're just a little clouded and jaded because it's your house. So I would have you guys come in as a pricing committee. You would tell me what I'm going to list the house at. I would want to underprice the house so that I can do it in a weekend. And under a week, I'd want to rip the Band-Aid off and get it done. And I would just literally fall into your control over that because I think that would get me the highest net profit. So I'm curious to see what you guys have to say about that. I want to do this experiment. I want to have you come to my I'm house. I have to finish it. I'm still working on it. No, I, <laughs> I want you to come to my house. If I, I want do you to come to my house, I will have to paint it. It'll be all fresh. <laughs> But how fun would this be? Like, how about all three of you come to my house and we'll make an experiment and we'll walk through and we'll I think we say do. what we would do and what we would change. Yeah. <laughs> so awesome. then that'd be so fun. <laughs> I think we should do it. It would be. I would also change. I also had on my list, I would change out my front door because I feel like that would be, that's the first entry point into your home. Yeah. And I have an older front door and I feel like I, modernize that front door and, and make that front you know, door agree with you as well take anything and give it a little zhuzh and make it look awesome right but it's dark it's those old-fashioned doors there's no light coming in everybody wants natural light now so i would really i would change that so you have more That's natural light it. my new doors are going to be six panel glass it's, it's i want who knows maybe i'll sell it when i'm done um okay so let's see what else do i have on this list hey um, i want to add to that i want to add to that because hey, yeah. Because you did say that if you're in a financial position that this would work, what you said, and yes, you are, and but not everyone is, right? So you, you, you can't just tell everyone they have to move out. So like what I like to say is a lot of times we've done this as a team, but I would say have the holiday weekend for, for off. You know, like we listed Tuesday, we have a few showings during the week uh, while you're there, but then you leave Friday morning, go down to the shore, like, I don't know, go to Boston, do whatever you want. Just get, get away for the long weekend and give us Friday, Saturday, Sunday to just nail your open houses, get everyone through without annoying you. And then hopefully we've sold it by Sunday night and you come home and you, you know, you're popping corks. But, but like that, that's ideal. I'd say instead of move out, maybe yeah. just move out for a long weekend. And that's, gonna, yeah. that's going to be. No, and I totally agree. And we have done that. We've sent a few people away for the weekend, either to their kids' houses or whatever, take the dogs and everything. Um, I'm, I was saying more like what, what in a perfect world, if I had my wish and whether that's to go into a rental and, and part of that, listen, full of candor is that I don't want to hear the feedback from the real estate community on, you know, what my furniture is like. So if I just get out of Dodge, you know, what I mean? this is, me as a realtor talking about putting my house on the market. Yes, of course, that strategy we've done many times and it works great. That's the best way to do it. This way people aren't inconvenient. So you're right. But I'm saying in my little perfect world, yeah. I'm out. <laughs> you, know what else? you know what else I'm going to say as well? Can you please turn off your Alexas and all your listening devices? Because you're going to form opinions on people and yeah. that's going to make your life worse when it comes to choosing a, a, a a person Moving out. You're a hundred percent right. You're yeah, 100% right. You know what? Your house isn't going to be everything. So it's okay. If they don't like it, it's okay. You just need to find the one that's going to pay you a ton of money. Yeah. Loves your house. That's it. Yeah. Anything else's opinions. That's yeah. really solid, you know? Yeah. <laughs> All right. So in terms of the listing package, um, obviously professional photography, obviously the floor plans, uh, start the social marketing campaigns that we've been practicing most recently, right? Um, because I think that's going to generate a lot of interest. 
I would list the house on a Thursday, which is normally my typical plan, list it on Thursday, take it through the weekends and have a contract by Monday or Tuesday. Um, definitely an open house. And again, contract it by Monday, rip off the Band-Aid quick, because again, that statement, your first offer in is typically your best one. So if you're walking away from your first offer, two weeks later, you're going to get that much less. Right? Do you all agree? Absolutely. All right. Does anybody want to add anything? Uh, I guess I would want to add something selfishly, I guess, a little bit. You talked about the, the, the committee coming in and pricing the, your house. Mm -hmm. I think, yeah, you need, you need to get some ideas on price. Um, but I just wanted, would say that you just really need to um, not list high. You know, just like you said, like list at market or just a little bit below. And don't listen to someone who comes in. And you know, it'd be great if you do have more multiple people come in to like you had our team come in, you had some other team or whatever. Maybe when they have those teams come in, throw out an aggressively high price. And if that real estate agent or team goes, yeah, sure, we can get that done. Mm -hmm. Just be like, bye bye. Because they're not oh, working for you. They're not working for you, yeah. right? They just they just want your listing. They don't really give a crap. The, well, what's going to happen in two weeks? They're going to say, "Oh, we need a price reduction." Oh, we need a price reduction. And, oh, and it's it's a little stale now, you know. Like, dude, just just price it right with someone who's going to look after you and look after your interests from the start, not from three weeks down the road. You know, when they finally get the the balls to actually stand up for themselves, or or you know, just price it right. You know, that's yeah. I'll say. I, I I actually was talking to someone just yesterday about it uh, about a listing that we might get soon and they, they they were telling me that they were throwing out super aggressive prices to realtors to see what they would say and, and it was just yeah we can do that yep yep and then they, they, it was like see you later every time yeah well you know what at least he had the uh intel to be able to well, i told him i told him to do that <laughs> well that was a good idea so I always make this statement and I want your feedback on this. You cannot underprice a house. Why? Because the market will pay what the, what the house is worth. And if you undervalue it, it's only going to get the piranhas biting more and uh, they're going to come in and offer what, what its market value is or more. Why do they, why do they know what market value is and they're willing to pay more? Why do you think they know that? Because they've kind of educated themselves through all the different real estate websites. They, they know the town that they're looking at. It's not like it's the first house they've ever seen and said, well, I have no idea what it's worth. Of course they do. They know what a four bedroom colonial in X town is worth in what condition they've got a, you know, they might not know to the $10,000 or something, but they've, they know what market value is for something and they know what they're prepared to pay for something, especially if it meets their needs to exactly what they want, or it's already got the brand new kitchen that Rhonda put in, you know, whatever it's got everything they want. They know that, okay, well, I know that the last house was here and I liked it, but this house is here and I love it. Well, I'm going to buy it here so that I can get it. Absolutely. Yep. They'll dig deeper into their pockets. Look, every seller wants the most and every buyer is going to try and get it for less. Yeah. So by creating the competition, it creates this adrenaline in them. It's almost like gambling. Yeah. You go for it. Every you single time. Yeah. All on black. <laughs> all right. That said, from uh, top, my top left, Michelle, why don't you give out your contact information? So if anybody wants to put their house on the market, they can call you and we'll just circle around. Sure. Um, my cell is 201-248-0826. Matt? Uh, my cell is 201-779-8193. Rhonda? And my cell is 201 819-1436. And if you can't remember all of that, you can call me and I'll pass the call along. So my cell is 551-206-9264. And we're looking forward to working with you this year. Take care. Bye.